Before we start, we need to tell you up front we are not a licensed financial planning, accounting or law firm. This is simply an education program which will give you factual information. We do not give any general or specific advice around finance, business investing, options trading or anything else. That is not what this presentation does. Please see a licensed financial planner when it comes to any investment advice you need. But before that, we had the track money. And why? Because we're here and we're doing the greater wealth. I've got Derek here, mate. Really good to see you, buddy. It's fantastic to see you again, Aaron. Mate, always good. Always good. Uh, we had lunch together, you know, you share a meal. We broke bread. <laughs> I saw you you'd say that. I actually set you up for it and I didn't even mean to, but there you go. Um, now, today we've got a, a special sort of cast. Uh, I've even turned your microphone over there. Yeah, you're on, mate. You're Is it on? On. Oh, I know. Yeah, you mate. turned me on and I didn't say something that's stupid. <laughs> and you've just fixed that problem. Okay, beautiful. Now, we actually have your beautiful daughters in the studio as well uh, as our guests. So they're in the background. Um, well, yeah, it's a family show. There we go. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really, really proud to have them. They're in the other room now because yeah, just in case daddy pizza. says one of the daddy words, eating, they're eating pizza at the moment. Yep. I am looking forward to today's show because, well, we all, I always do, but the reality is that um, – Wow, some of the things I, I haven't been involved in the conversation between these two, but I have been listening in, and oh my wordy lordy, are we heading into some interesting territory today? That's yep. a massive understatement. Mm. Mm. So let's do it, boys. I, I think before we start, I think it's very, very important that we <laughs> note that this none of this is actually financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> this is just our take on what's going on. Um, well, this show never gives financial advice. This no, is no, education. But, uh, there, yeah. There's a few muppets out there that try and think it is. Oh. Uh, we are giving financial advice. No. We're, we're not. So I just want to clear that first that, no, this is not financial advice. We're not telling you what to do. We're not any of that. This is just our take on what's going on. Sure. Um, take it or leave it. It's up to you. And if you do need financial advice, make sure you go to the licensed professional. Now, okay. disclaimers out of the way. It, it's an absolute shit show out there. Like it's. Is that a technical wow. term or what? It, it's like they're absolutely shitting bricks. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Did you like that crossover? No. I've been working on that all weekend, <laughs> by the way. You can tell. So one of the things <laughs> we, we want to have a discussion about, there's been a lot of YouTube financial commentators talking about bricks and mm. no we're not talking about the bricks and mortar we're actually talking about a alliance is the national official last year or just the joining of like a financial mm, it's um, bricks uh, so brazil russia india an china and south africa uh forming a trade alliance i'm gonna call it a trade alliance it's yeah, a, i think it's safer to say it's an association yeah, yeah. association so <laughs> The rumours floating around it is sort of like the, the uh, European Union. They're all just working together, try and make their economy as strong as possible. Xi Jinping, I think it was Xi Jinping, leader of the Chinese Communist Party, is the one that came out and said that they're looking to – sorry, no, it wasn't him, it was uh, Putin. So mm. they're looking to create a, a new reserve currency for the world. Yes, and interesting. And that is a big kick in the backside to America because they're obviously the current – reserve currency of the world that's right um, yeah but it, it's it's got some very interesting characters in this one so well okay i mean we're talking about let's face it right those particular places i mean china's china's economy is absolutely huge okay yep. the indian is the biggest emerging economy in the world in my opinion um pure it, population yeah exactly Ooh. right you know um, you got a couple think, of billion people where you go said it took up 40 percent of the world's population of, uh, in those five countries Oh, I'm surprised it's not more, to be honest. There you yeah. go. So yeah. 40%. But yeah. you also got to remember, like America, I think they're at 146 million people. No, no, no. Try it's about 330-something. But Is it now? Yeah, 330-something, okay. yeah. So yeah. There, it's America is still a huge population. Mm. And here's us with 27 million. Like, We're trying hard. Go us. We'll get there eventually. Mm. No, um, but it, it's kind of really interesting. The bit that I find fascinating is China and Russia have always worked together. They're, sure. they're just peas in a pod. Mm -hmm. But the one that I always found interesting and – I, I'm a big fan of the Indian Prime Minister. I think he's hilarious. Some of the policies are questionable, but okay. as, as a character, as a comedian, he's hilarious, especially his attacks on China. Because it, it's hilarious um, to the point where he intentionally tells really off colour jokes about cricket and eating bats in Parliament, but he says it in English, so that way it doesn't get removed from the handstand because it's not in Hindu, so they don't take it out. Gotcha. They have, both countries have openly removed weapons from the border because the soldiers just constantly clashing with each other. I think it was 2018, mm -hmm. uh, 120 Indians got killed by 
wood fence post with barbed wire wrapped around the top. China refused to release how many Chinese were killed, but India was saying, oh, we doubled their numbers. <laughs> um, it's a sad world when you're fighting over who killed more people, right? Spot on. So, like, there's been massive border contention between the two countries, and mm. now they're forming this, like, trade arrangement. It's like... Well, you know what? Sometimes your enemies are your best friends when it comes to money. Um, Especially if you're against the Democrats. Mm, yes. <laughs> very, very true. All so, right. So let's get down to the bones of it, though. Okay. So if we do get this great brick agreement, okay, and the we, we do know that obviously the, the gold standard hasn't been used for a long time mm -hmm. for the US dollar. We know that um, uh, Putin arranged things so that the, the, the ruble was effectively still based on gold. Is that right? Yep. yep. Peg, peg 5,000 rubles, one ounce of gold. Yep. Thank you. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so let's okay let's forget about all the the, the, the cold war crap mm -hmm. okay really their their money and the, the 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 financial standard they're looking at is based on something tangible whereas of course the us is just paper hopes and dreams mm. well actually no it's based on the the people paying their taxes true yes. true yeah. so dollars. that's something i learned mm. from derek there you go it's so education. i am i am listening and learning some things from derek which is good well, but the, the bit <laughs> the last time i heard a country was genuinely going to make a currency 100% backed by gold mm. was one of the Middle Eastern countries. And next thing you know, oh, there's weapons of mass destruction and the Americans go and invade and all this sort of shit. So, well, hang on, hang on. In fairness to the Americans, there was a lot of, lot of oil that needed liberating. Yeah. So, <laughs> with you know. fires. Yeah. 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 So it, it's. Are you one, saying it's a grizzly operation? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, you can tell who the dad is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dad's in the room now. So, yeah. right. <laughs> So I'm going to lift the uh, conversation level. Mm. Let's have some facts. My I think what's interesting about this, I was saying this, Travis, before we came to air, is if the intent is to strengthen the economies between the different nations, mm. right, I can see that. But what people don't often see is when it actually goes wrong. Okay. Case study, right? A few years ago, Greece got into huge financial problems. Right? Oh, no one noticed that. It went into belly up and yep. was asking the European Union to mm. bail it out. You imagine they're sitting there being the UK or being Germany at the time and thinking, why are we bailing out this country for its mismanagement of funds? Yep. Right. Yep. And this is the, the thing that people often, I don't think, foresee in the arrangements of these kind of associations and agreements. It's one thing to do business together, but when you start lumping in a currency together, mm. one lead weight starts pulling the rest of them down. Okay. Mm. Especially the harder they fall, and I think that's something that often isn't foreseen in this stuff. It sounds it's a great idea in principle. Oh, we'll merge and everything will be rosy and dandy. Uh, you've got to look at the downside. Okay. Any investment that I look at, or any business um, deal that you get into, if this doesn't go right, what's the exit strategy? And that's and wild. you can see the problems with Brexit, trying to get out oh, of the European Union, and how much it was costing them to stay in every year, mm, mm. right? Now, who's paying for that? The taxpayers are. Of course. And, and I think that's, that's when I hear these arrangements going on, I, I, I always think of that, that Greece situation. Um, oh, that's just crazy. Mm, mm. <laughs> Another dad in the room. So, <laughs> oh, Greece is the word. It's the word. <laughs> Captain Aaron, you're all right. <laughs> so, Derek and I have like the really bad dad jokes. You've just got the really bad shirts. <laughs> 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 but it, it's my, my big concern like let's let's take that into account so talking about when it goes wrong mm. you got the ccp yeah which are notorious for their human rights violations and let's not forget that they're in financial problems at the moment not like, just yeah. financial the, the building industry is in trouble mm. their banking industry is in trouble yep. like i i and the flow on effect of that everything's in trouble in china at the moment you've got russia who again is um former communist country Mm. corruption and briberies and all that is out of control over there already um they've got this little war on their hands at the moment which is costing huge heard amounts about of this. money is this new? Is it? yeah <laughs> you've got uh south africa which is effectively going through the opposite of the apartheid like the total opposite yeah yeah absolutely. so they were killing black people before now they're killing white people absolutely. so i don't know if there's a don't be anyone left over in that country um that, that's well really south joke, africa the with this I was there in oh, South yeah. Africa. I wanted to be there when Mandela uh, was still in power. I've got friends sure. over there. And I went over to see what it was like. Back then I was working in the media and I was curious to see because I think 
the media often represents what the cultural it aspires sure. to be or is mm -hmm. or trying to be. Um, and I was reading it, and of course, back then, it, you know, apartheid had gone, and they had to be very politically correct. They're getting equally racials, uh, equal representation of racials on kids' shows and sure. all this sort of stuff. So you got oh, black so colored, WA right now. Yeah. Sorry. So WA right now. Yeah. <laughs> black coloured white, all on there. And even if those individuals didn't have the skill set to actually present, they were still on there to sure. represent that. And, and it was it was weird. I was sitting there thinking, this is going to take a few generations to, to go. But what's what's occurred? The mm. biggest problem that South Africa has right now, well, it's got a number of problems, but one of them is a lot of their skilled people have just left. That's right. Come mm -hmm. to Australia, Western Australia in particular. And New yeah. Zealand. A lot of farmers went to New Zealand. Right. They've left, so they've lost that, that skills. They've, that there's been a lot of political corruption there. Mm -hmm. um, their place, uh, look, they're very strong as far as Africa is concerned. It's interesting to see that they're, they're, they're cozying up to China in this deal. Obviously, China's influence in Africa is huge. Yeah, huge. And the way it's it's positioned itself, oh, right. as you've highlighted over the last few uh, months in relation to those trade routes as well. Yeah. Um, very important for them. They're the, they're the interesting one in this. It, it, India too, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, if I was India right now and I've got one of my partners at war and I've got another in financial trouble internally, what does that position me in, in this association? I, I, I don't get it. Like The other thing is like there's all these videos about the, what they call it? The diamond necklace, I think they call it. Okay. So what it is, if you look at everything, the boat Belt and Road Initiative from sure. China, mm -hmm. everything was based to go around India. To okay. try and strangle their their hold. Um, right. So what India's done done is they've gone so all through the train tracks that they're trying to build around India, they've gone and made a lot uh, trade arrangements with everyone around down that route. Sure, they've made trade arrangements with Japan, who's on the other side of China, so they can actually stock up and refill military ships in Japan out okay. free use. Like they just come and go as they please. Right. Uh, same sort of things uh, near the Mauritian Islands around near South Africa and. Macaw, I think it is, uh, just on the south side of the Red Sea. Yep. So they've got all these trade bases, which they can also use for military purposes as well, and they're calling it the diamond necklace. So they're not only going around India, so they've got places they can get help from, but sure. they're doing it intentionally next door to Chinese military bases. So if, if it does get to a full-blown war, they can react immediately. Right. Okay. So that's the argument. Is it like... Uh, Diamond necklace is a term for like a choker or a, to strangle someone. Right. So their intention is we'll strangle Indi China. We'll block all their trade routes. All the trade routes that they've made now will yep. be in position to militarily yeah. block okay. every single trade route. And yeah, but okay. okay. Well, them traditionally, out. though, okay, train uh, you know, has been uh, a train line, something that can very easily be broken. With yeah, it's military. called a bomb. Exactly. Yep. Interventions, right? So it's what about a, boats? Well, so this is where just taking this into Australian perspective. Sure. To block all trade routes by sea into Australia, you mm -hmm. need two submarines. Really? That's it. One off the West Coast, one off the Queensland. Yep. You will stop every single ship from coming into Australia. Okay. That's how dangerous Australia is in a situation but like this. But I think this. every country has got that vulnerability. What, well, whatever there's happens, three you know. choke points on the Indian Ocean. Sure. And that's, I think there was a report saying that 80% of all international trade goes through the Indian Ocean. How much? 80%. What I think is interesting mm. in any of these arrangements is, uh, let, let, let's go back to basics. Mm. What's the basis of any business deal? Make your money. Well, trust. Trust is one of the biggest factors there. Sure. It's got to be a win-win for every party. Absolutely. All right? Because if it's not, you're not going to continue doing business with that individual. If That's you right. feel like you're getting the worst end of the deal and there's nothing much in it for you, why mm. would you continue doing that? especially yep. if it's costing you. True. But that trust factor is huge. So, now, that trust factor plays a part, not just in this in terms of economic um, progression, but also political progression here. And if, if the politics isn't right, and I, I look at these nations that are banding together, I go, how how well do they trust each other? Spot on, especially with China and India. Mm. And then the other couple of other parties that they're looking to bring into the arrangement as well, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran or Iraq. Right. So two major oil producing countries. So I, I'm starting to wonder, are these countries doing this purely because they've ap lost absolute faith in America and the Democrats? Mm -hmm. And they're doing this as a way to preserve their imports so they can make sure they can continue well, to make exports. Yeah, exactly. That's, they're protecting just their own talk, market. Like Simple literally talking about the trust. How much trust do these countries actually have in the USA at the moment? 
oh, I don't think anyone's got any faith in the US. Mm. I mean, when you've got a leader who is that weak and is so apparently weak and, and clearly sent off. That obsessed with ice cream. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Not just, <laughs> not just trust with the US, but what about yeah. trust with each other? as partners yeah. and, uh, mm. i mean uh, let me give you an example the, the relationship between australia and new zealand has been very tight yep ever since world war one oh, for sure the anzacs forms and we uh-huh. remember that every year and that, mm. that that agreements between australia and new zealand the migration you know that's affect immigration between the nations and yeah, all this sort of stuff. it's based on trust right the, come on let's be honest new zealand is the eastern most state of australia in a lot of ways you know what even but then, in the australian <laughs> constitution they were a signatory yes but that, yes so your point though so my point is this yeah. if you put brazil Russia, India, China, and South Africa all in the same room. Mm-hmm. My question is, how well do these nations trust one another? Look, I'm going to say not a lot, to be mm. absolutely frank. Um, I just think it's it's about aligning yourself for you know uh, the future because we all know that there's going to be collapses. Like We all know there's going to be financial collapses. I think that, that 2008 is starting to look like a blip in the radar compared to what's coming. I could be wrong because I'm not the finance. Well, a lot of the indicators, uh, things like uh, mortgages, uh, interest rates, uh, consumer confidence, all the, the major indicators. Yep. The lead up to the 2008 financial crisis is actually worse now than what it was back then. But it is, it's a really interesting time because we've already been through the 2008 and we've, we've seen how they managed to get out of that. Yeah. Are they going to do something similar? Well, or what are they, they going to let it play Well, out? they had the bail in. I mean, let's face it, they just protected themselves. They did certainly didn't care about the, the citizens of the world. Yeah, you know, or or their debtors, you know, those who have who invested in the banks and, and you know have their savings in there. So um because I don't know. It's funny it's, you should bring that one up. I was watching another report, I think it was Thursday last week. So Credit Suisse and du- Dutch Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank. Deutsche mm. Bank. So they're the two big banks that insure banks from collapse when mortgages fall over. Right. They they've got a thing, um, I can't remember what it's called, so Derek, you might have to bail me out on this one. It's the level of insurance policies versus the revenue coming in. So okay. how much are they are they insuring versus how much their their companies are paying in, in uh premiums. When um the one in two thousand eight, uh not Brown Brothers, the big bank that went down then, there was about two percent was the ratio. The two banks now, Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse, is yeah. actually over three percent. Really? Which is even higher, a worse position than what the... What was the bank the that went down bank? in the US? Oh, it's the, a really big... I know, I know. I, um, yeah, I Mental can't. blank. Happens what? every Monday. Sorry, the big short. You know, in 2008, the bank that fell over, which pretty much initiated the entire global... Any May. No, it was something mm-hmm. else. It was an American bank. I want to say something in Spencer's, but I'm just totally off the off the planet on that. It were two It'll come to me. It'll two two come banks. to me. What were but, the two banks that went over? Um... Come on, Mr. Finance. It was Fannie Mae. That was one of We've them. really and put I'm you on. trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. Look, we'll put, put you on the, you're on the spot there. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we'll, we'll find out on the break. Things, things go. But it, it's and let's really have a interesting it's that those two banks are actually even in, like, they're saying that they're not done fall over, but they're, they're in an even worse position than what those ones were with what's going on. That's concerning. But one of the big concerns that I found personally just going into the, the property markets, and let's use the US one for this one. When all those properties fell over in America before, it was very, very isolated which which cities went, went over. Sure. Uh, now in America, it's actually pretty universal across the board. All the house prices are coming down. Really? Yeah, really? in the same way. So where did it hit the US as far as property values last uh, month? Loans were issued that should never have been oh, issued. Oh, no doubt about it. It hit Arizona, yep. uh, Kansas City, okay. Atlanta. Those were three major areas. Okay. Arizona was hit really hard, and it was because Arizona is quite affluent. Um, okay. It's very but, middle America, isn't it? Yeah, what, what you've got in the United States is you had a lot of Californians leave um, and go over to Phoenix. Sure. Um, not because of the climate, so to speak, but because they're just tired of the culture, the sure. wars, the gang yep. wars in California, LA, and they had a lot of um, illegal immigration from yep. uh, Mexico go up through the border there. Mm-hmm. So they're wanting a better life for their families. They went to the next state. I'm not sure if I'm accurate on this, so but I'm the the massive. I, I, I heard a statistic the other day about the massive uh, drop in population in in California particularly at the moment, where the migration going to, you know, Florida, Texas, all that sort of area. It's, it's just I can't I wish I could remember the number. I, I, you, I know the Hollywood one you're is, talking about. Hollywood's even leaving. The Hollywood stars are leaving Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard that, but apparently what's happening is the population isn't being 
boosted by the illegal immigration because apparently that's where one of the fences are that Trump built. Right. So they can't get across the border there anymore. They're going to other places to get across the border where the fence hasn't been finished. Mm. Yeah, I, but I don't think it's that. I think it's yeah. exactly what Derek was saying. I mean, I saw uh, Rob Schneider on TV on YouTube last night. Okay, he's now taken his family and they've moved out of, of LA yeah. because of exactly what you're saying. I mean, yeah. apart from the high taxes and all that, but he was sick and tired of being controlled and, and this com complete oppression that the Democratic Party seems to... Oh, no, 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 you get that under the Republicans. Of course you do. Course Sorry, you sarcasm do. there for everyone listening yes. at home. All right, we need a break, my friend. Lehman yes. Brothers. Lehman, Lehman Brothers, Brothers, thank you. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got so, it eventually. Beautiful. All right. So anyway, just going back, the, the Swiss Bank and the Deutsche Bank are actually at a higher debt. I think they call it the debt ratio. Yep. Um, no, there's an official term for it. I'll find it later. Yeah, they're actually in a higher position than what the Lehman Brothers were when they went under. And there the government failed you to bail go them out. with that. Okay, so no free to toasters when you're you know, going to open a bank account this time, right? <laughs> I thought you used to get firearms in America. Oh, you like do. You open I a bank account and they too, give you yeah. a rifle? Yeah, <laughs> it seems fair. <laughs> We've got Travis over there with the inappropriate comments. That's basically the only reason he's here. And for the information and the education, <laughs> we've got Derek. Mate, um, we've had a quick little break, uh, and I want to get back to, or you want to get back to, we want to get back to um, the issue at hand here with the gold standard. Um, um, well, Last week you asked a question, and I, you put me on the spot there, and I thought I wanted to just research it a little bit more. All right, cool. And, and that was, I want to answer your question, is um, why did they ban the possession of gold in the United States originally? Yes. Now, what they say officially, why, why it actually happens can be two different things. <laughs> the official line was mm. to remove the constraint of the Federal Reserve, preventing it from increasing the money supply during the Depression. Okay. Can you speak in English now? Yeah. So basically... <laughs> Sorry, Aaron's shirt was so loud, I missed all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it required the, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, yep. Yep. right, wanted the backing of 40% gold of Federal Reserve notes that were issued. You remember they had the, the, the big boom in the 20s? Yes. Followed yep. by the Great, Great Depression. Yeah, Depression absolutely. afterwards. Yep. And by the 20s, the Fed had already reached that allowable ratio um, of uh, allowable credit that they could do out. Um, in the form of Federal Reserve demand notes. Okay. And that could be backed by the gold in its possession. So it's like, well, we need more gold in the system. Gotcha. Now, right. This is interesting because we saw an interesting little article during the week mm. come up about the Federal Reserve and somebody was talking about how, you know, it's, it's red on their balance books and all this yep. sort of at the moment. Now, this gets a little bit technical. Okay. You've got to understand, so I've got to back up here. So well, when Speak a, slowly for me, man. When a country needs money, right, yep. what they do is they go to the central bank and they say, hey, can you do that? They form, they, sure. they sell them some bonds. Sure. Yep. Right? And the bonds are basically IOUs. You are Paid for us. by taxpayers. Mm. Sorry? Paid for by taxpayers. Yes. So they go into debt to get these, this money. Sure. The bonds are really interesting. The prices of the bonds are very much related to the interest rates that are being charged by the Central Reserve because okay. if you buy a bond, right, let's say you buy a 10-year bond and you're going to get 5% at the end of the 10 years on your money, right, you're buying that for a 5% return sure. on your investment. Well, if the interest rates go up, right, the, the, um, the percentage changes. Of course. And so in that time, if there were new bonds issued, mm -hmm. Nobody wants the five percenters anymore. They want the ten percenters. Of course, okay, yeah, yep. that sort of stuff. So, what happens to the base value of that bond? It drops. Oh, okay, right. because it's not as valuable as yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. one with yeah. the highest interest okay. rate. Okay, sure. so it has an inverse relationship: the price of the bond to the interest rate. So, if interest rates go up, the bond price goes down. Okay, okay, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. What's happened, of course, is America during the G um, GS during the COVID. It's printed all this money, gone, and the printing press has gone over yep. time, right? So it's got it's 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 basically issued all these, um, sold all these these bonds to the market to mm. the U.S. government, right? Now at the same time, what is it doing? What's it been doing in the last few weeks? Keep inflation down, uh, hiking up interest, rate. interest rate, right? Yep. So the bonds that it sold are now worth less oh. than what they actually printed it at. So th this article was going on about how it's it's red. It's a sea of red on terms of the books of the Fed Reserve. Now, it's not that, from an economics perspective, it's yep. not that big a deal because okay. what, they know, what they can are do… Are you saying that the media would sensationalise things? Come on. And well, well it's most media any... wouldn't talk about it because it's too complicated yeah, to talk okay. about it, right? Yeah. So the, the bit that I find fascinating yeah. is not just any media. This is Bloomberg. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. they're arguably the most reputable media when it comes to financial news. Okay. Like 
So they're yeah. second behind us. Like <laughs> <laughs> satire as well, Bloomberg. Please don't sue us. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just not it any commentators here. This is like the bee's knees. These mm-hmm. are like the Gucci, the Louis Vuittons of the the financial sure. advertisers. This isn't Channel Seven. This is like the actual real stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now it was bugging me the week. I was thinking about it. Like you can't say that. Is, is the Fed going bankrupt? You know, that question gets bandied around. Sure. But you've got to understand they actually print money so they can actually just create more money to buy them back at higher prices, okay. right? But they also know when the interest rate's going to change. So if yeah. they want to reduce the price, they can reduce the interest rates and just buy a ton of them back when they want to. So it's yeah. so easily manipulated when you basically print the currency. So sure. who controls the currency controls the nation Absolutely. and the population and the economy of that nation. And this is why having faith in the currency, especially the reserve currency, which is the US dollar at the moment, is so important. Because the Federal Reserve, they effectively control everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the even scariest one, now, I don't know if Derek can answer this one. First of all, does the American government own the Federal Reserve? No. I knew that. That's because Derek told you a couple of weeks ago. True, this is for the true, people true. listening at home. Okay. <laughs> um, do you know who actually does own the Federal Reserve? Well, this is where you get into some very interesting theories out there as to who owns it. Um, okay. There are many commentators who believe that the Rothschilds I, I don't know if everyone could hear this, but my kids are laughing their heads off in the other studio. Well, the Rothschilds are that funny. I mean, let's yeah. face it, right? So, so okay. that's, that's, you know, and those elite 1% mm. families that – Yep. Yeah, they've uh, had power controls. for, you know, basically forever. The final generations, yeah, like generation, generation. generation. So the yep. Rockefellers are looked into, Warburgs, those, those kind of fam- families sure. are often spoken about in those things. It, I always find it funny that just going down conspiracy corner for a little bit here, they always say, like, the richest people in the world, you've got like the Elon Musk, the, the Twitter dude, the guy from Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Mm. Um, there's a Chinese dude that beat him for number two for a while and then he lost a heap of money on the stock market. How come, like, the Rockefeller family and all this, who are in control of, like, hundreds of trillions, well, I don't know if it's hundreds of trillions, but insane amounts of money, how come they never show up on these lists? If, if you had hundreds of trillions of dollars, and I'm making that figure up from you, mm. would you advertise? I hate to say it, that's a lot of happy tickets. <laughs> it's a lot of happy well, tickets. It's, it, it's interesting. There was, there's, well, there was one, um, I don't know if you saw the documentary, but yeah. there was one of the kids from one of the 1% of the families actually released a documentary recently right. on what it was like to be wealthy and was filming all his rich mates and friends and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And after he did it, all his friends were suing him and wanted to get off the documentary and all this sort of right. stuff. It was fascinating yeah. um, to see how the children of the 1% were actually I'd like to see this. And, and I think I'll yeah. be vomiting as I watch it. But <laughs> you know, the parties they go to and all this sort of stuff. Look, so, I mean, I'm all for, like, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I, I, I have a little saying in life, never apologise for making a living, right? Mm. I think success is, is something you should strive for and whether it be financial or, or emotional or, or whatever you're trying to succeed at, you should give it a go. So I don't think you should ever trash people for creating financial wealth. Good on them. If that's your thing, you go for it, right? But yes, when it's becomes when it goes to that level when it's been inherited and inherited and, and it's, to me, becomes filthy dollars. Well, I, it, there's no, the, like, I these disagree. People, yeah, okay. I disagree. It's how it's handled and how it's taught. Again, it comes back to your life purpose, sure, right? Sure. I want. Do you want to pass on great wealth to your kids? Yeah. I do. What, 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 do what you parent want to, to the government? What, mm. what parent wouldn't? I have no issue with that. But it's instilling the values in your children. Going, this is not to be used for greedy purposes to sure. rule over other people, to harm other people. This is to better society. Yes. This is to yeah, better. Yeah. This is how you use money. And it comes with that. Again, the financial education. Who is master of the money? Is the master is the money ruling you or are you master over it? Oh, you know a K pop reference is coming. Oh, there's always one coming. I, <laughs> Lisa um, Blackpink, she did a solo song and out the front she's got a big thing. Money is a terrible master, but a great servant. Okay. You and your K-pop references. This is very true, though. K-pop oh, wisdom from Travis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. oh, it's, got to, it's like Kung Fu with him, isn't it, really? Honestly, I feel like uh, what's in Carradine's going to come out and say something very wise in a minute, right? Confucius say. Yes, exactly. exactly. Oh, it's K-pop say. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new show, K-pop say. Uh, I'm going to go along. I'm just going to backtrack to that. What you said, <laughs> get away from me and your K-pop. But I'm gonna, I actually thoroughly agree. I mean, I, I think what you've said is very, very valuable. What I'm saying to you is the people who have, I, I want to leave my kids a legacy, right? Whatever that legacy mm-hmm. is, that's fine, right? But that's it's an important part, or part of your life. 
But if you leave your children with immense wealth, yes, you also leave them with immense responsibility there, right? right. It, it, it's okay. it, it's like leaving a kid with a, a Ferrari or a Mustang, right? Yep. You they know, know how to drive it. They've got to know how to learn how to drive yeah. that. I, yeah, I have very to say, true. I am going to quote an NBA star mm. now. Okay, not a K-pop the, song. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, probably arguably God. the scariest NBA star of all time, mm -hmm. Shaquille O'Neal. Awesome. So he actually yeah. told his kids, you're not getting my cheese, my money, until you bring me two degrees. Right. So not all of his kids were written out of his will. So you got to remember, this is one of the original billionaire NBA players. Sure. Like insane amounts of money. Um, to give you an idea how influential on the NBA he was, he single-handedly changed the design of all the basketball rings because he was breaking too many of them. Really? Yeah. So what happened is if they do not bring the, him – a masters and I forget how they do it in America. You get one when you finish high school and one when you actually finish university. Sure. You don't get two degrees. You're not touching a single cent of my money. And he actually Good on him. out of his will. Good on him. Yeah. Oh. So, which I find that really fascinating that it, it's Shaq. He's supposed to be like the big dumb guy from no, the no, NBA. No, no, no. He's quite bright, that one. Yeah. So now, I want to talk about someone I've been following for a long time, but you guys have got fresh info uh, on her, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Now, Tulsi, oh. as I understand, was actually a presidential campaign candidate, rather, um, for the last election, but she also was um, a congresswoman as well. So, uh, look, she's done a couple of tours um, of a, a, Afghanistan, I think it was from memory. Uh, so, you know, decorated, um, uh, you know, person from uh, a soldier and so forth. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, she ran for the Democrats. She ran for the Democrats. She ran for the Democrats. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, okay, she's done whatever. something pretty big this week. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who were driven by cowardly wokeness who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, who are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, I believe in a government that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government that is of, by, and for the powerful elite. Now, I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking our country, then I invite you to join me. Let's just talk through what, what she said, okay? Now, the cabal. The cabal. Look at that. Now, that's quite an interesting choice of words. That's a big mess. It's a word that like, you won't hear politicians generally use. No, you won't. So you I won't. think what's really important is we actually need to know what is a cabal? Well, why don't you just type that up on the old uh, dictionary, <laughs> mate? I think, um, <laughs> see what the ox has got to say about it. Look, my thought is this. I mean, I, as I say, I'm not, uh, well, I'm not American for a start. So, okay, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I would certainly say that if I was over there, I'd be well, truly leaning on the Republican side. No question about it. But I, when I saw Tulsi speak several years ago, I thought, wow, this woman knows her stuff and she has the main thing i saw about it she had the american people's interests first and foremost she was that was her number one priority right and you know it's just the, the, the you hear this uh, just absolute rubbish come out of the mouths of, of these other politicians which is self-serving and all kind of thing her focus was always the american people right and i thought you are in the wrong party. Like, what are you doing there? And everything she was saying had um, it was it was that genuinely central idea, and it was genuinely um, for the for the better of the country. And 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 that's something I've certainly not heard heard from the Democrats at all for a very long time. Um, and you know, obviously the Republicans tend to be more interested in in um patriotism and not we I, I get really annoyed about this i really do and this is a new thing i've got an australian flag shirt as many people have seen right and i've been told that wearing that shirt is racist right no i'm sorry it's actually pride for my country and i see you know when you look at the us and they're, they're being told that putting their flag up is is don uh, you know, offensive and all that sort of thing how the hell is it offensive to love your country right 
So with with Tulsi, she has been, as I say, look, you know, very articulate, very intelligent. Um, and you know what? She passes the, the pub test to me. The fact that she's done a couple of runs in Afghanistan means a lot to me. I think that that shows that she genuinely wants to serve her country. If she's mm. going to put her life on the line, you really, you're the real deal, right? And this woman has turned around and said, right, you guys are a cabal. Like, yeah. You are batshit crazy. I'm not having anything to do with you. And she's actually quit very spectacularly. Like, the, the courage of this woman oh, is astronomical. Well, it gets yeah. even more interesting. Okay. Right? <clears throat> I, I know Derek's on his phone. This is dangerous. This, this, is, this is interesting. <laughs> Julie Green, who's a prophetess, said on February the 27th of this year, 2022, watch, news will break out about Tulsi Gabbard. She's changing sides from blue to red. She's not. She has seen what is going on and cannot stand for what they stand for. It's Tulsi is not one of them. Watch my children as more switch sides. More will suddenly retire and step down. They know they will not win this time. The Democratic Party, as you know it and see it now, will be no more. Yes, this is a time to clean house. You would say spring cleaning of anyone who does not stand for with me, who does not stand for freedom. Wow, it's almost and that like, was on February twenty seventh. It's almost like trading the swamp. But that was only like the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about six odd months ago, right? That's, that's not a bad. Did she actually predict it would be her? Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wonder if she can tell me who wins the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a lot of numbers. I'm easy. I'm easy. Definition of cabal. This is according to the Merriam Webster Dictionary since 1828. So it's a very old dictionary. Mm. Uh, the contrived scheme of a group or person secretly united in a plot as to overturn a government, also a group engaged in such schemes. Yeah, you wouldn't use that word unless you really, really meant it. Um, and you wouldn't use that unless you had insider information about what's going on. Oh, so ballsy, right, to say that word and to leave the way that she's left. Right? I mean, I it's not going to happen, but I'd like to see the US actually come up with a third party and I'd love to see her leading it. That's what that <laughs> There's my dream. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. But, uh, I want to uh, never say never with what's going no, on. You, never world, know. <laughs> you know what I'd love to see? What's that? I would love, to, uh, originally I thought it was Rand Paul, Rand Paul. I would love to see as Trump's running mate in the net upcoming uh, election. full term yeah, yeah, election. Yeah, yeah. Not that half no, no. term, the full term one. Yep. But you know what? They had Camilla Harrison as a token <laughs> black white a token black woman for the Democrats. Yeah. Why don't we actually just have a genuine person? Or oh, well, the other one I want to see is Candace Owen running oh, with Donald Candace, Trump. Love Candace, yeah, yeah. So you know what? Let's skip Trump. Leave him in the background as the boss that that tells everyone what to do. Let's have Candace Owen and this lady okay. uh, Tully running as for the prime minister, the president, okay. and I'm vice gonna president. Be, I love that, but I'd be more. I'm going to be a little bit more realistic, but out there, but realistic. Okay, how about? DeSantis is number one on the ticket, okay, and Tulsi uh, Gabbard is number two for for the vice president. That would be to me the Who's absolute. DeSantis? That is the way to what? I don't really follow. Him oh, DeSantis is America. the governor of governor or whatever the the head of uh, Florida, okay, and he He's has made some very gutsy calls. He has made some very gutsy calls. I'll have to look him up. Oh, make no mistake, he is the man at the moment. In fact. I think he's got a better chance. I can't even believe him. So he's my he's question stood up is, against Disney, basically. Yeah, and yeah. good not, on him. You're not doing anyone who stands against Disney is, is an absolute legend. Yeah. Um, my question is, how old is he? Oh, young. He's in his late forties, I believe. Good. Now, that's one thing I don't like about Trump. I think he's too old. We've seen what happens to Biden. Trump's yep, still yep. there. Sure. Trump's still relevant. Yep. But I, Biden, too old. I think DeSantis has a better chance of winning than Trump, and that's I think that's a bold I statement. Moore's going to come out about Biden and explains your questions, Travis. That that ice cream video just says it all. <laughs> so know, Derek showed me a video today of Biden oh. in an ice cream shop talking about how strong the economy is. Right. And there's no one there. No one cares. Yep. No. Like, no. They're no. not even screaming. But Trump set, sets foot out of one of his hotels or whatever, oh. and it's just got people posse. scream not positive things and negative things out him. So, like, he's he's actually relevant. There's not much time left to get into that uh, doing your life purpose. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Of course. Worth forty-seven dollars. If you want to do it for free, you can win. Mm -hmm. um, Travis will oh, get them out to you. I love uh, how you very, say Travis will get it out. This is your responsibility. <laughs> Travis. The um, the fact is, the promo has been running now for a couple of weeks, um, and it's been great to see people have entered. You know what? But I want to see more. Simple how, as that. How we to should... find your life purpose mm. by understanding techniques of wealth to use. Why don't we do the draw next week? We could do that. Actual live draw. Live mm -mm. draw works. Mm -mm. No? Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. We could. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I could sure. draw it from home. Okay. Because I don't want to drive like like today's traffic took me an hour no, to get in. Next, no, next week. It's still all right. Do it. Right. On air. This is the last week to get in. Oh, 
We'll take your stick helmet. No, where's your actual real helmet? The real helmet. We'll yep. put the name, the drawers for the people that have liked to comment and shared the Draw things. them out of the helmet. We'll draw them out of the helmet. Sounds good to me. I'm happy with that. And I'll do it with an ice cream and I'll pretend to be Biden. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll forget what I was supposed to be doing and then they'll be like, it will just fit in perfectly because I'm totally unprepared. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> You know, I'm going to change the song, right? <laughs> okay? I'm going to put in a song that represents this is all about Travis. We have finished the show, guys. We are out of here. I'm not even using the mic. Have, have you got a song, a song called Mr. Awesome? No, I don't. Web of okay. Lies. Web I know you lies. got it there. So I've chosen a song for Travis. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being part of the show. Derek, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just sorry. Um, the, the Shave Down chimp has done it yet again. Uh Please be part of the show. We love the fact that the questions are coming in through social media. And uh, remember, next week we're going to come back and talk about some really important stuff about Ukraine. I really want to get onto this subject. So uh, with that, it's Edge Radio Australia. Greater wealth.